Hey everyone, Nathaniel Ruffeljans from Nintendo Prime, and today we're talking about PlayStation 5, because we have uh, some news about PlayStation 5 that is, it deals with the pricing of it, um, and we're just going to read this whole article and kind of react to it. Um, it. It says Sony is struggling with the PlayStation 5 price cut due to costly parts. Now this comes from Bloomberg, which is a very reliable outlet, uh, but it actually comes from a writer we're very familiar with, Takahashi Machizuki, who used to work at the Wall Street Journal uh, as a Japanese correspondent, specifically with a lot of video game stuff. He did he does other things besides video game markets, but he's talked a lot about Nintendo in the past. Um, and here he's talking about Sony and using his connections. Um, and it says in the bylines that he may wait for Microsoft Xbox Group to make the first pricey move. It definitely sounds like they're definitely doing that. We've heard rumors they're waiting for Microsoft to announce price first. Um, and that there's a new PlayStation VR headset also planned after the PlayStation 5 launch or around the time that it launches, which that's not surprising. PlayStation VR is like the most popular VR headset in the world. Um, even though it's a smaller market, Sony has a big foothold in that market. So it's not surprising to see them launch a new one that goes with PlayStation 5. Um, anyways, let's get into the article. It says scarce components have pushed the manufacturing cost for Sony Corporation's next PlayStation to around $450 per unit. That is very, like that's, that's their cost to make and manufacture and put together a PlayStation 5. That's a lot. I mean, that's $50 more than the PlayStation 4 costs at retail. Or PlayStation 4 Pro, I should say. Um, forcing a difficult price-setting decision in its battle with Microsoft Corporation, according to the people with knowledge of the matter. One thing to note here is that Microsoft traditionally um, takes a loss when they price their, their systems. Sony does sometimes, but not always. Uh, Sony usually goes for profit. They went uh, you know, for profit with the PlayStation 3 at $599, and they did make about... I don't know, I think it was about 20 bucks per unit on PlayStation 4s um, at, at the time. So, like, Sony usually likes to make a profit per unit, whereas Microsoft's willing to take a big loss because they, they like to make up money on the back end with Xbox Live and Xbox Game Pass subs and all that. Anyways, let's get into the rest of the article. The Japanese conglomerate is preparing to gradually replace the six-year PlayStation 4 console, releasing this PlayStation 5 the same holiday season its arch rival debuts the upcoming Xbox Series X. Sony typically finalizes a console's price in February of the release year, followed by mass production in the spring. With the PlayStation 5, the company is taking a wait-and-see approach, said the people, the people, um, asking not to be named because the details are private. The PlayStation 4 released in 2013 at a retail price of $399. It was estimated by IHS Market to cost $381 to manufacture, uh, with the $450 unit cost and a similar gross margin to PlayStation 5's retail price would have to be at least $470. So they project, project about $19 profit. I thought it was $20, whatever, somewhere in there. It was profitable either way. Uh, that would be a hard sell to consumers, considering that, that Sony's most expensive machine now is the 399 PS4 Pro and is often discounted, according to the marquee capital analyst Damian Thong. It would be crazy. I mean, people have wondered, are we going to, is next gen, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, are we, are we looking at 499 People have been debating, are we going to see a $500 launch system? Um, that's still not PlayStation 3 pricing that launch, but it's still pretty high. It seems like 400 seems to be the ceiling um, for uh consoles but i don't know there's a lot of power in these things so we'll see what happens uh consumers will benchmark their expectations based on the playstation 4 pro and the ps4 thong said if sony prices above that it would likely be to balance a need to offset higher material costs against risk to demand sony declined to comment the company's biggest headache is ensuring a reliable supply of DRAM and NAND flash memory. Nintendo's had issues with the NAND flash specifically as well, driving up costs to manufacture switches. Uh, with both in high demand, as smartphone makers gear up for the fifth generation devices, according to people familiar with Sony's operations. Samsung Electronics Company just announced its Galaxy S20 product range, which looks really cool, by the way. Um, each variant of which will have 5G and a minimum of 12 gigabytes of RAM in the United States. Video game companies often sell hardware at thin margins or even at a loss because they profit from lucrative game software, recurring online subscription services. Sony's chief executive officer, Kenshiro Yoshida, has said the business should be judged by the number of active users, not the number of hardware units sold. Some Sony game staff think it should sell the new console at a loss, if necessary, to match Microsoft's price, while other Sony executives prefer to make money as the company did with the PS4, because it is likely that, that Microsoft is going to undercharge what it costs to make the next Xbox, um, and that potentially could put it at a cheaper price than, than what Sony does, and that's that's a, the internal debate or the eternal debate really is like should they should they you know undercut the match because Microsoft's likely not going to make the same mistake in bundling something in and making it a hundred dollars more. Microsoft's likely going to try to be hey here's Xbox Series X and it's three ninety nine. Period, and I don't know if Sony's willing to match that price point and lose fifty dollars per unit. That's We'll see. 
And we must keep PlayStation 5's build of materials under our control, and we need to make the correct number of units in the initial production, Sony's chief financial officer Hiroki Totoki said in an earnings briefing earlier this month. Most of the components for the console have been locked down, the people said, including the cooling system, which is unusually expensive at a few dollars per unit. Typically, companies would spend less than a dollar, basically a fan and a heat sink, uh, but Sony opted to lavish more on making sure heat dissipation from the powerful chips housed inside the console isn't an issue this is actually really good news um playstation 4s and really playstations in general they there's times like a little bit of dust build up and it's like taking off like a jet engine um if they're using some sort of vapor chamber cooling like the xbox one x is or like some phones are and stuff that would be really really ideal um it cuts down on noise massively and noise can uh, in, in consoles especially is way louder than even most gaming pcs it gets kind of crazy especially with playstation so um I'm, I'm glad to see that they're they're going to spend a little bit more on a premium cooling solution i hope i hope it's not just a bigger fan with a bigger heat sink because then it's going to be even louder but um I, i'm assuming that with a few bucks in production it's got to be probably like a vapor chamber or something like that um be crazy if they went full on water cooling but i highly doubt that because lo there's longevity issues with water cooling and maintenance and stuff um the ongoing coronavirus outbreak has had no impact so far on preparations for playstation 5 production they said the companies that decide how many ps5 units it will make in the first year so uh the big thing here is we there was a previous report that coronavirus could cause like playstation 4 xbox series x to be delayed now what they're the, the big note about this is says the, it has had no impact on preparations it doesn't say it doesn't have any impact on manufacturing basically what they're saying here is playstation 5 has not gone into mass production yet and because it's not in mass production it's hard to know what if any impact coronavirus has coronavirus just has not affected their preparation process so um, we'll see what happens once it goes into mass production and if any more reports come out that, you know, there's not as many workers at the factories or, or whatever's happening or supply chains for the factories are restricted. You know, we, we don't really know what's going to happen until it goes into mass production. Uh, separately, Sony plans to release a new version of the PlayStation VR virtual reality headset tentatively scheduled after the PlayStation 5 goes on sale. So it probably won't be there at launch, probably early 2021, uh, but that's okay. I mean, you give people time to, to be acclimated to the PlayStation 5 and then give you give them a new headset. The old headset will probably be, you know, usable with it, by the way. Like, if you own a PlayStation VR right now, you could probably use it with the PlayStation 5, but you're just going to get a better experience if you get the new one. Um, just, you know, like, like most things, you get new tech, it's usually, you know, better than the old tech. You know, I got iPhone 11 here. Like, it's better than the old iPhones. Like, that's just the way it goes. Uh, Sony has already canceled some previously planned features for new mirrorless camera do this year owing to the constrained DRAM supply several people with knowledge of the matter said now this mirrorless camera this is because Sony also creates some really really nice cameras uh, I'm not using a, a Sony camera myself I'm using um, a Lumex camera but uh, there's a lot of uh, Sony branded cameras out there and mirrorless is is the kind of camera I'm using right now you're seeing me through a mirrorless camera uh, and they were going to launch a new one this year but they're holding back because they need DRAM uh, and DRAM's just being allocated to video game systems and obviously a lot of computer parts. So um, a delay on their camera side so they can push their video game side, basically. Um, Sony executives are voicing patience about the next console's pricing as they anticipate the transition to be a gradual one, said people familiar with this day-to-day -day operations. Many of the games launched for the PlayStation 5 will also be available to play on the predecessor machine, which is true. Although Sony did come out and say there will be exclusives, but I wonder if they're timed. I, I, I'm kind of curious how exclusive those games are going to be. I have a feeling even a lot of Sony's internal games will still be on the PlayStation 4 for at least a year. Um, I, I know that was a big controversy with Microsoft because Microsoft said, hey, look, our exclusive games aren't really exclusive. They're also going to be like playable on, on Xbox One and Xbox One X uh, for a year or two. Um, and that really put some people off, but I, am going to be honest if Sony's planning for PlayStation five to not be this big factor for them for a little bit. Um, I mean, that's just like last gen or current gen, really there, there was a gradual transition from PlayStation three to PlayStation four, same with 360 to Xbox one. So, I mean, that, I think that's pretty reasonable to expect that PlayStation four is still going to matter for a couple of years. Um, so revenue from software and related network services is expected to keep the business performance intact. So PlayStation Network and stuff like that. Uh, Microsoft and Sony are both expanding their respective online subscription services, revenue from which may allow them greater flexibility in hardware pricing. That's what Microsoft's banking on. They already have expanded with Game Pass, and now we have xCloud coming. So Microsoft's really well positioned to not, not need 
to make a profit per unit sold on their system. Uh, people within the PlayStation Business Unit said a key factor in deciding the ultimate PlayStation 5 retail price will be where Microsoft sets its price for the next generation Xbox Series X. Microsoft is widely expected to hold that information back until the E3 Gaming Expo, which is pretty much as late as you can hold it back for people who want to pre-order. Um, so that, that'll be huge. That's going to be a huge announcement at E3. They, they announced the pricing for Xbox One at that time too. And we know Sony's not going to be there. So Sony is probably going to hold an event shortly after E3 to announce their pricing. So I bet you they definitely are going to let Microsoft go first with the pricing. Um, and they're either going to match it or try to undercut it. Because remember, this generation, what worked for them brilliantly is when they said, hey, look, like we have a more powerful system and it's cheaper at launch because they're not bundling in play the PlayStation camera. Um, so Microsoft's not going to make that, the camera mistake again, the Kinect mistake, but they're um, they're wondering, you know. I, I think if Microsoft comes in at $399, there's no way in hell PlayStation 5 is going below $399. Um, maybe they'll match. Maybe they won't. I don't know. But uh, I have a feeling that the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 are going to be at the same price. I bet you, unless Microsoft goes crazy. If Microsoft goes for the, the $499 price point, I could see PlayStation being like, oh, we'll go $450. We'll go $470. You know, they'll undercut, but we'll see. There is pressure from CFO to Toki for Sony to provide more transparency and information in the build of the PlayStation 5's release because they haven't been very transparent, uh, which has caused some consternation internally. Asked about when the expert, when he expects Sony to provide guidance on the gaming business outlook for the new fiscal year, Totoki said the plan is no different from recent years. So basically around the end of April, the company takes longer than usual. Analysts may look to its next investors relation meeting to glean hints about the new console's retail price. The company held that meeting in late May of last year. So basically right before E3. All right, so on screen right now, you're seeing what's already been confirmed to be a PlayStation 5 dev kit. These are really super clean renders of it. The real thing isn't quite that shiny and everything, but uh, these, these are renders of a PlayStation 5 dev kit. This is not ex what the PlayStation 5 itself is going to look like. This is just what developers have on their desks or wherever they're, they're, they're developing games in their basement for, for probably some indie developers or something. Um, the point is that PlayStation 5 is going through a process right now where sony isn't exactly sure what to do because it's really expensive it is by far the most expensive new generation system ever made um, and we already know that xbox series x according to people that are actually developing games for the series x and for playstation 5 is more powerful by the way than the playstation 5 we don't know what the margin of difference is i'm sure it's within margin of error and it's going to be very very close because they're using the, the same um, companies and the same parts essentially internally pretty close to the same parts but apparently the xbox series x is going to be more powerful and if it, it even if they cost say 500 bucks to make an xbox series x but they charge 399 Sony's going to be in a really difficult place. Um, now, Sony has the brand power, of course. They have the, the consumer trust. They have the the, the more well-established studios and exclusives coming to their, their platform. And, you know, Microsoft's got to build up that reputation with the new Hellblade and, and all the studios they bought. But um, it, it's going to be interesting. This next-gen battle between Microsoft and Sony is going to be very interesting. Even as Microsoft has said their competition is more Google and Amazon because they're talking about streaming services, they are very much still in direct competition with Sony and PlayStation 5 uh and yeah i mean sony's gonna wait sony's gonna play the wait game they're gonna let microsoft announce the price of d3 and then they're, they're gonna match it or undercut it i'm not sure which depends on what the price is um and honestly i think 399 is a sweet point if they can get it to 399 i think it's gonna be great but is sony willing to lose you know 50 plus dollars per unit to sell it at 399 i don't know microsoft is definitely willing because they are way better off than sony is overall as a company and they have all that additional revenue coming in from game pass and xbox live and then x cloud eventually so um, i'm very curious how this is going to work out this is a very fierce competition nintendo's role in all of it is just let them battle it out and we're just gonna keep doing what we do because nintendo just doesn't care <laughs> um so for switch purposes i don't know how much of an impact it's even going to have um it definitely sounds like all these games are going to be backwards compatible for a while so switch should still get third-party support for a year or two but man it's going to be it's going to be crazy dude I'm, I'm excited i'm like always excited about new technology and next gen stuff and i just can't wait like sony's doing weird things with the playstation 5 like we now know what the dev kit looks like been leaked been confirmed but then like oh they gave us a logo oh there's a playstation 5 website but there's no announcement on when they're actually going to unveil the playstation 5 and like it, it's kind of crazy sony's almost a little tepid right now um it's kind of like us waiting for nintendo directs like when are we going to get nintendo direct I don't know when Sony gonna unveil the PlayStation 5. I don't know. Um, this is crazy because Microsoft already went first at the Game Awards. They shocked 
everyone and showed the system, showed a game for the system. Like, I think that was shocking. That was last year. So uh, here we go, folks. Next gen. <laughs> the hype is real. Anyways, I am Nathaniel RoboJets from the Nintendo Prime. If you enjoyed this video, you want some more PlayStation 5 news and all that, uh, be sure to like, subscribe, comment below, get this video tons of views, because the more views these kind of non-Nintendo videos get, the more coverage I'm going to be inspired to do, because I am very interested in PlayStation 5, PlayStation 5 games, Xbox Series X, Xbox Series X games. Um, this stuff is very interesting to me, and I do plan to own both systems at launch, so we can have that three-way battle of Switch and PlayStation, maybe hopefully Switch Pro, PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. Uh, it's going to be exciting. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And, uh, yeah, subscribe, hit that bell icon, and I'll catch you in the next video.